Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chassis Variant series with myself, Critical Rocket, and we've gone all the way back to the beginning. Here we are, back with the Locust. But why? Why are we back with the Locust? Well, as you may guess from the title, this is the Locust uh, LCT-1VB. Now, the lowercase b in any unit uh, designation in Battletech means it's a royal unit, and a royal unit was part of the Star League, and uh, it's specifically House Cameron's forces. So, uh, to give you an idea, right, so you would have uh, Star League era mechs that might have been used by the Great Houses. So they may have had some pieces of Star League era technology, but they weren't specifically uh, Star League era uh, equipment. So they may still have normal single heat sinks and the such, but this, the Royal units, they were, they were teched to the nines. And so the Royal version of the Locust uh, didn't have machine guns and uh, a single laser. This one is equipped with two medium pulse, two small pulse, and a medium laser. So you still have the CT mounted laser, but now you've got the pulse lasers uh, spread in both arms. And you can build this with, I think it's the 3 or the 5M, the one that's got all energy hard points. And it uh, should have ferrofibrous and XL engine to help cover the, uh, the necessary requirements for heat sinks and such, and uh, double heat sinks, and uh, endo steel. And it's a Freaking great little uh, little mech. It's very very hard to overheat this thing. You can alpha with it multiple times and not have to worry about overheat. Um, it's it can be tweaked a little bit. Uh, Davros has used this build and he's very much enjoyed it. Though he switched the medium out for uh, I think it was a small pulse or a small laser, and for him he's he's been having some great fun with it. I think he did a match where he did something like six or seven hundred damage uh, the first time he took it out like that. And uh, it's definitely one I'm keeping. Uh, in the in the mech bay because it's just fun. It still maintains the high speed profile. Uh, it might be tiny bit lower on armor, but then again, you're usually relying on your speed and lack of hit detection when you're piloting things like locusts and piranhas and that. Anyway, so with the high speed profile and the pretty decent punch you've got, you've got a fantastic little harasser mech. Uh, if you can build this in other locusts, you go for it. If like uh, if it was possible to do it in things like the Pirate's Bane, you can. I've picked this one because the hard points are in the correct locations, which is the energy being in the arms rather than anywhere else. But if there is if there is the ability to make one that's got more energy in the CT or whatever, do it. Uh, because this is a really solid build. I enjoyed playing this, uh, this mech, and uh, it's... Strange that PGI never added this one. I suspect that this might be on the cards for a loyalty reward at some point. You know, give it its own unique skin, and then it'll be something that'll be added at a later date to purchase. And if that does happen, uh, I do recommend it. I do recommend picking it up. <laughs> Even Hebe enjoys it. She's just her. She's wow. She's just had a go herself, and she's incredibly happy with the results. So um, yeah, uh, that it's it's. Not much else to say about it. I mean, it was uh, as far as the background's concerned, it was introduced in 2610, so it's got a fair old age to it. And yeah, it would have been used by uh, the uh, royal units of the Star League Defense Force. These would have been basically your elite troops, your frontliners, uh, to uh, crack enemy defenses and that kind of thing. Uh, they would have been used extensively during the Amaris Civil War, and they would have also fought on the periphery, um, fighting. Houses are like uh, the Turians and uh, Marion. Uh, no, Magistracy of Canopus and such. There would have been a, a huge number of them out there. And yeah, when the Amaris Civil War kicked off, they would have all come back and uh, taken part in the invasion uh, to retake the Star League or House Cameron's territory back. So I'm not sure how many of these would have survived. I doubt many would have survived the Civil War. Uh, from a historical standpoint, I think many of them would have been destroyed, or uh, any, probably most of the surviving examples of this mech probably would have gone with Kerensky's Exodus. So you probably could argue that it's there's probably a few of them in clan storehouses, uh, maybe kept as some kind of heirloom uh, and used by uh, pilots and maybe for specific rituals or uh, <coughs> maybe for duels, that kind of thing. But these kind of mechs would have been kept in in pristine condition by their, by their clan owners um, in, in like the modern period. So, yeah, because uh, they're, they're counted as these kind of ancestral uh, heirlooms kind of thing that incredibly rare, so uh, the, the privilege of piloting them would have been a, a very big deal for clan pilots. So, yeah, um, post, uh, post the sort of 
Lost Tech era when it comes back. Uh, I doubt this mech would have been built that often because I think uh, that's when you start getting things like the 3M and the 5M and stuff. Harris Marrick and that and Steiner start making their own variants with things like streaks and pulse lasers and that. So, yeah, still a uh, fun mech. Have a go of it if you're inclined to, uh, to try out some uh, different builds on your Locust. And uh, it's a cheap one at least because it doesn't cost a lot to build it you know, or buy it. So, yeah, it's, it's a fun one and... Uh, yeah, this, I think this match is about to wrap up. Uh, the preview window is incredibly pixelated. It's really hard to tell what's going on in this new software. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll leave you with that. Uh, have a good one, all. And uh, I will uh, see you next time. Bye.